Hey everyone, welcome to Make Your Peace, a 4YE podcast about why not Earth. I'm Catherine Mushaw. And I'm Laura Hayes. And today we're discussing season one, episode 13, I Walk the Line. So we'll be having a spoiler-free discussion and then a spoiler-filled one. So if you're new to Winona Earp and don't want to be spoiled, don't worry. We have a warning before the section, and we break up the section with a nifty little commercial courtesy of the folks over at Earp Fiction Addiction Podcast. So with that, Laura, what is this episode about? In this episode, Peacemaker Goes Missing. After Bobo places a bounty on Winona's head, she faces a heartbreaking choice in her quest to take down the Revenants. Alrighty. So, I'm sure you want to start with the title. I do. The title for this episode comes from country music icon Johnny Cash. I dig it for this episode because we are dealing with a very literal line. We're dealing, you know, like with the boundaries of the Ghost River Triangle. So, it's cool. It works. Yes, yes. And see, I could have done that one. <laughs> Absolutely. Some of these I can do. <laughs> Everybody loves movie. Johnny Cash. I like the movie. <laughs> no, I'll yeah. give you a pass on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's Reese Witherspoon? Yeah, for sure. Also, weird and random fact, totally unrelated to Wine on Earth, but June Carter Cash, born on June 23rd, a.k.a. my birthday. Hey. Yep, I'm full of random facts that sometimes pertain to what we're talking about. Alrighty then, on to the episode. So this was the season one finale. So we got some questions answered and, you know, added a lot more to our queue by the end of the episode. This is true, yeah. So where do we want to start? Because we got some big stuff happening. So where do we want to start? Oh my gosh. Okay, well... I'm going to go favorite moments because there's so much, there's just so much to unpack here, you guys. So I do, I love that, you know, Doc's first instinct is just to shoot his way out of that massacre party. Yes. And, and Dolls is, Dolls is pretty close behind. Like his first instinct is to throw Winona out a window, then shoot his way out. Mm -hmm. So I really, I got a kick out of that. Yeah. Yeah. My first note actually for that, like when I was taking my notes watching the episode was I like how Doc just starts shooting people. So yeah, we're on the same page. Yeah. And yeah, Doc and Dolls throwing Winona out the window, but being really apologetic about it just really makes me happy. <laughs> just like, sorry about this. And she's like, wait, what? <laughs> so good. It is. Like how else was she going to get out of there? And our scrappy little Waverly lifting Peacemaker before Bobo mm -hmm. can make his getaway. Like, so slick. So good. Because she knew something was up. She did. She always knew something was up with Willa. And I'm fairly certain we didn't entirely, like, do the best job of do it, like doing that spoiler free last week where we were like, oh, let's let's pay special attention to Waverly and Willa, but I don't care because Waverly is like the bravest and smartest little toaster in the group. So she I is, love her and yeah. she's great. She is so brave. And I mean, it's with how major family is with her, her relationship to, with Willa is like so interesting with like, she's kind of, I mean, for the past few episodes, it's just like since she came in, Waverly's been kind of like, mm, I don't know, I don't know about her. And because of that, she was kind of able to get a jump start, but like to kind of head them off from the start. Like she was able to prevent them from walking over the line right at the party. Yeah, otherwise, that first attempt would have been 100% successful. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, she saved it, she saved the day. She did because she's amazing. And then she immediately gets chloroformed. Uh, okay. Which is less than fabulous. All right. Okay. But I love that Chrissy Nedley is genuinely impressed by her own kidnapping prowess. Like that phone call, like there's a yeah. part of her like that can't believe she managed to chloroform and res restrain Waverly all by herself. Yeah. If So, I mean, like, if you ignore the frothing at the mouth, it's kind of a sweet moment for Chrissy. Are we, like, having a, like, 
this must be something magical happening because we are recording on the anniversary of our first recording because I literally have a note about Chrissy being competent enough to chloroform Waverly and tie her up. <laughs> because it was a really great moment. <laughs> yep. We are we are completely lined up here, me and you. I mean, like, I, I love that scene so much. Like, I kind of wanted to yeah. be like, good job. Good job, sweetie. Now right? let Waverly go. Like, you did it. <laughs> I mean, she uses a lot of duct tape, and that had to have hurt when Willa just, like, rips it off. Yeah. Like, that that was a lot of duct tape. It was, it was yeah, it was. Also, like, that duct tape, like, across her chest just made no sense, but, any, I mean, you know. Whatever. I know. <laughs> um, it didn't. It was like, it, it was like she was, like, wearing a shawl of duct tape or something. Yeah. Or, like, a little, a tiny bolero jacket of duct tape. Chrissy, we said Chrissy was competent enough to execute the kidnapping and to tie her up. We didn't say the tying up made a hundred percent sense. So yeah, yeah, no, (laughs) I would give her, I would give her like a solid C plus, you know, as far as kidnapping goes, like a solid C plus. Yeah, I mean, maybe, I mean, you might have to like, you know, grade on a curve with her being, you know. Having you know ingested the the poison and stuff like that, she's poisoned. So I was that that's so why she yeah. got the plus. <laughs> I was, but yeah, no, I love it every time I the duct tape on the on the top, like on the shoulder around the shoulders and stuff like that kills me every time too. I'm just like, there's it doesn't need to be there, but it's just it's for effect, you know. Yeah, <laughs> just just to hurt her a little bit more because you know, like I said, that crap hurts. I enjoy it. (laughs) I am. Speaking of uh, Nedley's, Nedley had such a wonderful moment in this episode. I guarantee you I have the exact same note. Go ahead. Probably. Probably. Because I love the fake out where it looks like he's going to take Winona in or like, you know, and stuff like that but he ends up standing up for her with a nice speech. And I love it so much. Like he just like the level of faith he's like, he has in her and her ability to, to save everybody because like, he's no dummy. He knows something's weird going on. He knows why Nona's helping. And I love it so much. I completely agree with you. That's also one of my favorite scenes it's just, it's a great day for the Nedleys all around, I feel like. And I love that, you know, he like, I love his fake out in the beginning, like you said. I also, I feel like Winona completely echoes, you know, like the audience when she's, you yeah. know, like walking away afterwards and she's like, must be the end of the world because I want to marry Sheriff Nedley. And like, so did I, so. Right? I mean, who didn't? I think we all did. Yeah, I mean, it just... Spoiler alert, I'm pretty sure we're going to have half the episode, well, over half the episode, probably the whole episode in our favorite moments <laughs> while we discuss this. <laughs> yeah, no joke. I think this is the fastest I've ever burned through this section of my notes before. I'm just like, I love this, and I love this moment. <laughs> I don't even have that section. Like, I'm not even using that section right now. Yeah, I mean, it, it's... And I, I mean... It's just, just, there was so good. It was so good. Like, I really liked episode 12, but I also really liked episode 13. It's it's a good end to the season. Yeah, before we even get any, like, deeper into it, like, this is just, it's a phenomenal episode all around. Before you and I started recording, we were both talking about the fact that we had to cut ourselves off for quotes. Like, (laughs) this season finale really delivers it you know we solve uh, for a lot of problems we raise new problems like all around and the pacing you know just the the action the way the episode moves just brilliantly done and you get moments for everybody you get yeah you do plenty of herb sisters moments you get and i love the herb sisters you get uh way hot moments you get moments between you know, Winona and Doc and Winona and Dolls and Doc and Dolls and, you know, even Nicole with the guys and, you know, everybody. It's so great. You know, mm-hmm. Bobo, you know, gets to have that moment with Waverly and, yep. you know, Willow and stuff like that. So it's pretty balanced. It's nicely balanced. Yeah. And what you, yeah, like to your point, like it really, it it really felt like no character left left behind. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
Like, I didn't feel like anybody's storyline was, like, I, I mean, it, things were left open at the end, but I didn't feel like anything was left hanging at the end, and that's a pretty important distinction. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. But, yes, I mean, some of our other favorite moments. So what, what else do you have on your list? I think the best reaction ever to finding out your whole town is overrun by demons goes to Nicole Hot in her formal wear with her huge gun. Yes, I will agree with that. Like, it's just go time for her. She, yeah, she's like, thank you so much. I knew, you know, I knew this town was nuts. Thanks for trusting me. Let's go, you know, mm -hmm. let's go start some shit. Like, that's amazing. I I love that scene so much. And I like how it's delivered. Once again, it's like the delivery of that with Doc just be like, Doc's delivery where it's like, boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and then like that moment where you're like, okay, what's Nicole going to do? And she's like, finally. Because yeah. it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you wait all season to kind of, for Nicole to kind of finally get that answer because you know she knows something's up. And then mm -hmm. it's such a satisfying, like, they don't treat her like she's stupid. You know, it's just like, you know, I knew it. Yeah. And, you know, you, you see moments like that in a, like, I love those I knew it moments with characters, you know, like, I don't know why this one popped into my head because it's only kind of half re re relevant, but that's how my brain works and that's how we work. So it's like in the first episode of Angel, when Cordelia gets taken to, <laughs> I think it's the guy's like mansion or something like that. Yeah. So she's yeah, in yeah. this room and she's looking around. And she's like, wait a minute. And she's putting all these clues together. And she's like, you're a vampire. And mm -hmm. he's like, no, I'm not. It's like, no, I've come from sunny to and stuff like that. It's just kind of one of those moments. I love those moments where it's like the character just like, yes, I knew it. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, it's also, it's, it's also really cool. Like when they just go with it, you know, like yeah. just, just go with it. Like we're mm -hmm. suspending our disbelief. I need you to just, you know, sus to suspend yours. And it was, it was a really great delivery too, because it was, you know, like facts, 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 beat, finally, you know what I mean? Like, but there was that like breath of a moment where you just mm -hmm. for a split second, you didn't know how she was going to take it. And then she's just like, oh, thank God. Yeah. All right. I have a better comparison. Oz in season two of Buffy when he finds yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Yep. Did everyone just see that dude turn into dust? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that vampires are real. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, <laughs> so. See, I've got to get my Buffy mention in. My brain just needed a second to warm up, apparently, because it's not hot enough here. I, I also like that your brain was like, here's this angel comparison. That doesn't work. Here's this Buffy comparison. There we go. I don't know where the angel one came from. I haven't watched Angel in such a long time. I know, and I think I've only seen that first season, like, once. But it's just funny that, like, your brain was like, uh, let's correct our brand a little bit, and here's Buffy. Yeah. That's let's funny. improve. Yeah, that was funny. Thank you, brain. <laughs> I'm in one on our phone. It's fine. Usually that that goes into Buffy mode at some point, but we have to keep up our record of mentioning having a Buffy reference every episode, which I think we've managed. Yeah. Otherwise, I think yeah. Otherwise, I think Kevin will boycott us, and I'm not about that. So no, that would be terrible. We don't want to. We don't want to lose our <laughs> our loyal um, Buffy Erper watcher <laughs> listener. I also, with Nicole in that moment, I kind of adore the look on her face, just the excited look. Kat Burrell's facial expressions are the best thing ever. Like, the background, fa like, watching her in the background of the fight in the beginning at the mansion when they're trying to get Winona out and control the crowd is the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. They're so great. Because I actually, I watched that episode, I might have watched my screener twice. I can't remember. I think I might have watched it twice. I at least watched certain scenes multiple times and then watched it when it aired. So it's like I had a lot of like pausing and stuff like that just because and getting those couple of screenshots are just like it's just like marvelous. She yeah, she's wonderfully expressive. Speaking of Nicole, again, of with favorite moments. Mm -hmm. Nicole Hot with that bulletproof vest. Long live the bulletproof vest lesbian forever and ever. Amen. And God, the timing on that was just, I mean, this was 
June. Yeah, June of 2016. Yes. Yes. Take it back, Catherine. Take it all the way back. (laughs) You make it sound like it wasn't two years ago. (laughs) <laughs> I'm so no, I'm just so excited because like I don't know, like what if somebody listens and like they weren't really into fandom? Then give them a lesson. Tell them what happened. All right, all right, all right. Let me sit up and do this. All right. No, so I mean, this was this is June of 2016 after the mm-hmm. massacre of queer characters we had in 2016. You know, we right. we lost like a dozen in the first three months, like by March of 2016. One of yep. the big ones that like caused a it caused like a crazy ripple was uh, Lexa of the Hundred. Yep. Not the first. No. Not the last. But with how it was handled, and I welcome anybody who is hearing this for the first time to go look that up. Yeah. And get some information, just because I, I don't really have time to go into it. Yeah. Also, like. Auto Straddle is a great resource for that because they they put out a lot of mm-hmm. coverage during that time, and they did a lot yeah. of comparisons. They had charts, like so. Yeah, if you if you weren't yeah. really into the fandom and you don't really know what we're talking about, like definitely check out Auto Straddle and and read up for yourself because it was it was a bloodbath. <laughs> yeah, at the risk of plugging my own stuff, I wrote a piece about the particular uh, Alexa. Uh, the hundred and kind of the impact of that girl plug in. <laughs> so no shame anyway so it's like this was happening and of course Winona Earp had actually finished filming they filmed late 2015 early 2016 so yep. this was all filmed when this started we, the barrier gaze stuff was like really going crazy popping off yeah so you know it was just it was rough being a fan yeah, it was. because we had, you know, we keep like, oh, I love these characters, and especially, like, you know, it, it's kind of that, you know, nobody's safe feeling. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing about Winona Earp is, early when the season started airing, they did. She Emily Andrus did an interview with After Ellen, where she said like, both queer characters like make it through the end of the year or something like that. Basically, like. Or she at least said Nicole did. I don't remember if we had gotten to Waverly being out yet. It's been a while. (laughs) And, you know, it was like a big thing for her to do that, for her to say, for her to basically spoil her own show. Right. And they had like a big talk about it. Yeah. And it came from a place of like concern. Like, I mean, Emily Mm -hmm. Andrus knows her fan base and she knows that we're not here to watch queer ladies get murdered. You know what I mean? And Yeah, it it was a really big deal that a showrunner, like you said, spoiled her own show just to give the fans peace of mind. Because she didn't want us approaching, you know, the end of the season with this fear in our hearts that we were going to lose somebody else. Because, like, I'll I'll level with you guys, like, and, you know, we won't stay on this forever, so I apologize. But, like, you know, Lexa meant a lot to a lot of people. She wasn't my favorite, personally. But, like, I had just gone through that with Person of Interest. I had, like, I mean, Samin Shaw ended up living, but, like, I didn't know that at that point. You know what I mean? Like, we had no idea. Like, and then there was a whole thing of, like, whether or not we would even get a next season. And it was it was a train wreck. I was going through it with that. And the morning after mm-hmm. Lexa died, I texted one of my best friends because I knew that it was the big, you know, uh, kiss and everybody was so excited and all of this stuff. I literally sent her the text and I was like, how was it last night? And then I opened up Tumblr. I immediately shut Tumblr and I apologized to her because I had literally texted her so excited and her favorite character in the whole wide world was just murdered. And that's just what it was like that year. Mm -hmm. It was just every time you turned around. Yeah, and like I, I've mentioned, I got to interview, during season one, I got to interview a number of people. I did get to interview Emily after I screened the finale. So yeah, when we talked about it, she mentioned, you know, they had a big internal talk because of what had been happening that year. You know, because of the year that the community had had, they decided, you know, saying, hey, this character makes it through the end of this the, uh, the season was the right thing to do. So it's like they wanted to, to do that. You know, part of it's a little self-serving, obviously, because they want the viewers, you know, but obviously it was, it wasn't just, oh, we want these viewers. It's, you know, I care enough about this group of people to be like, let's, let's do this. 
Right. And I have to tell you, I made the mistake of whatever season of Orphan Black aired that year. Oh, God. Uh, been, I think it would have been the season four finale. Mm-hmm. I watched that either right after or right before I watched my screener for this episode of One and Earth. Jesus Christ. That was a mistake. But I... I'll tell you what. Knowing, and I, I, I need to say this too. I, I apologize for like, oh yeah, so I got screeners and I got to interview. I'm not trying to like brag. I just, it gets very, I get very excited that I got the opportunity to do that. So I don't want to ever come off to like as a braggy asshole. <laughs> so I just, I, I feel like I just need to say that too. I, I promise I'm not trying. I just get really excited. But when I, I don't think you're coming off that way at all. And I'll fight somebody who says that you are. So keep going. Okay, cool. I remember sitting and watching, watching the screener and it was the day before season 12 aired. So I was watching it a week and a day before the air date. And I remember knowing what Emily said about Nicole surviving. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a screener is basically like having it, like you get the spaces for the commercial breaks, like you know where it fits in, but obviously you don't get the commercial breaks. So you get to go through. Mm -hmm. The second Nicole gets shot, I lost it. As in, like, I had to pause it and yeah. get up and walk around because part of that was, like, one of the best things about something like this would be being able to tweet along and talk about it with other fans. But I didn't have anybody else to talk mm -hmm. to about it. <laughs> so I literally, I had to get up and do several, like, a walk around my house to, like, get back. And I was like, oh, my God, 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 oh, my God. It was like I had to sit back down. <laughs> And it was like, that was the moment I decided I needed a request to interview Emily Andrus. But no, I mean, it was still, it mm -hmm. wasn't like knowing that Nicole would survive took away from that moment. Yeah. And honestly, especially, I, I do and I did trust Emily. But it's still, especially with how some of the deaths that year especially went down, it was hard to put your trust completely in the showrunner. Also, so many bullets that year. Just so many chest shots. Yeah. Jesus. So it was like, my logic brain was like, okay, she wouldn't have, like, she's not an idiot. I trust her to do the right thing in this situation. Like, I, she went through the step. She went through the step to reassure the community and all this stuff. But still, my emotional, the emotional part of my brain was still like, holy crap, what just happened? So, yeah, that was my long-winded, like thing but yeah it's just the experience of watching that for the first time that year was just insane it really was it yeah I mean I think I shouted obscenities for a while and then I, I eventually like calmed down I really concerned my mother who I had <laughs> like roped into watching this uh watching this plucky little show with me yeah, she was, she was a little bit freaked. She was, you know, mom concerned, you know, like she yeah. was just like, Oh God, are you okay? You know? And I, I had just, yeah, I had had so much happen that year, you know, in TV anyway. And I was just, she thought she was in for another, yeah. another rant, but it, yeah, it ended up working out. I also, I just, it like a little, a bulletproof vest. Like we had been screaming mm -hmm. like for so yeah. long that like, that was all we needed to see a character in. And like, you know, to kind of like, to kind of get away from that, like seriously, the entire showdown with the three Earp sisters is amazing. Like, I'm so uh -huh. glad that Nicole was, was wearing her bulletproof vest, you know, yes. don't get me wrong, but like also Winona's confused, like girlfriend, like, and yeah. Waverly's love confession and, all of it is happening against the backdrop of Willa's animosity. And I'll never advocate for a queer character getting shot in the chest. Obviously that's not my brand, but like having Willa pull the trigger, like once she had peacemaker in her hand, once she had what she wanted, it really sealed her fate. Like she could have pulled the trigger on anyone and we would have known that she is the very thing Winona is fighting against. She's the thing that Winona yeah. fears she'll one day become. And Willa is way over that moral line in the sand. She has everything she needs. She shoots Nicole anyway. Like Winona and, and God love her, you know, like Winona isn't ready to give up on Willa yet. 
but the audience already has in that moment. Oh, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I think the audience was kind of already there. But, yeah, that that sealed it. You're right. That yeah. absolutely sealed it when she shot somebody she didn't like. Well, yeah, I mean, she, well, and, and it's like earlier she wanted to shoot Pete. Yeah. Just because he was in the way. Mm-hmm. And talking about, oh, well, sometimes you have to make the hard, uh, like, hard decisions. And it's like, that's not a hard decision that you have to make. That's murder. Right. <laughs> yeah, that is what we're talking about. Yep. Yeah, so it is, it was such an important, like, it's such an important moment. And it is the last moment we get with the Herb sisters. All three, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we get, we get the scattered moments. But, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of one of those things where it's like, and, and you build up to it with Willa only being focused on Peacemaker. And, you know, Winona has to ask, you know, if she's worried about Waverly. You know, the second Willa gets to Waverly, it's like, where's Peacemaker? Yeah. And it's like, it's that moment, too, that causes Winona to pause. Absolutely. And I yeah. love how they set that up. It's like the second, you know, they separate, you've got this desk between Willa and Waverly and Winona. It's like, so... There's that divide. The second Waverly is freed and passes Peacemaker to, to, to Winona and runs over, there's a big barrier in between, you know, Winona and, and Waverly and then Willa. Yeah. So I, it, it, it's nicely set up there, yeah. too. Yeah, I mean, you can see the choosing of sides, right? And mm-hmm. then immediately after that, you see Winona and Waverly standing away from her and standing mm-hmm. together against her. Yeah. Which, it, I mean, that's another thing that I really like that was shot really well. well. I mean, a lot of it is the the direction of this episode is, is just really great. Mm-hmm. You get some really great blocking. But yeah, it's just because it, it's funny because, you know, we kind of talked about it a little bit two episodes ago with Willa and, and Winona in the barn. You know, Willa talking about how, mm-hmm. oh, it can be me and you again, just like it, just like old times. But, you know, while Willa was gone, Waverly and Winona built this relationship. Yep. So Willa can't necessarily just place doubt in Winona's mind. Like they're not 12 and 13 years old anymore. You know, they're not kids anymore, but she's playing this game like she's a kid. Yes. It goes back to something that I was talking about in one of our earlier Mm -hmm. recordings where I was talking about how, like, you can kind of see, like, you you almost wonder if this is, like, stunted growth on Willa's part. Mm-hmm. Because she does operate very much like a manipulative, like, big sister, but a manipulative yeah. big sister who's, like, younger than 15. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I, yeah, completely feel you on that. Yeah, it's kind of a really interesting psychology with Willa and mm-hmm. how she treats Waverly. Like I said, I'm going to keep coming back to my interview with Emily because I've got a few things on that, but I don't want to deviate too much from, because I still had a couple of notes on the, the bulletproof vest scene and stuff like that. But yeah, it's, it's all very interesting. And I don't know how that could have gone with Winona. Like, there's no way Winona would have chosen Willa's side. Like, there's nothing Willa could have done. And she tried all that little, like, oh, I think Waverly is poison. It's like, obviously not. She'd be showing symptoms. Right. Like, you can't just pull that same stuff. Yeah, she's grasping at that mm-hmm. point. And, you know, she's, she really, I mean, look, be, let's be fair. You know, like, she's such a terrific villain. Especially, mm-hmm. like, considering her relationship to our heroines. And how very late she was, like, brought into the season. She showed up so late. But, like, when you, like, the scene that you were talking about with Pete... Like, that hug that she gives Winona after whacking Pete over the head is absolutely chilling. Yeah. Like, you can see her true feelings all over her face. It just one more time, props to Natalie Krill. She was such a menace. Lover or hater, she played the hell out of Willa. She really did. She really did. And, I mean, I wasn't necessarily expecting them to introduce Willa, you know, with three or four episodes. Yeah, she was in, like, four episodes. I wasn't expecting Willa to be introduced and then killed off. Yeah, me neither. Not at all. I mean, obviously, as you get closer to kind of the end, you're like, oh, this is what has to happen. And obviously, I mean, 
the show is called Winona Earp. So, you know, you kind of... Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a giveaway. This is the focus is on Winona. You know, she... <laughs> so we kind of knew something was going to happen. But yeah, it's like you weren't necessarily expecting early in the season that this is where it was going to be going. With Winona having to kill her sister. An interesting mm -hmm. moment where we get a little bit of a Peacemaker difference. Yes, we do. And Peacemaker normally turns orange with these nifty runes on it. Mm -hmm. But Peacemaker turns blue with a completely different design and noise. Peacemaker makes a different noise yep. when Winona shoots Willow. So that's kind of an interesting... We have talked about Peacemaker in our uh, season two episodes. And I believe I have talked about this particular Emily bit that I'm going to bring up again, because it is such an interesting moment where it's like, Hey, wait a minute. Peacemaker just did something very different, you know? And what, when I talked to Emily, what she said was, you know, it has to do with, you know, why not making a different choice? You know, she was basically doing a mercy kill. Mm hmm. You know, but it, it definitely has to deal with Winona's choice to, to kill a human. There's a lot more to it, probably, but, you know, the gun didn't glow like that when Winona killed Ward. So, we don't know. The, gun, the gun's just kind of a cool thing that's kind of uh, its own little, got its own little mind. That's my thing now. But, yeah, I, I love Peacemaker yeah. so much. But I, I love that moment where Peacemaker turns a different color because this is right after it doesn't work for Willa. Willa, sh Willa shoots Winona. Basically. I mean, she pulled that trigger twice. There were two chances there for her to not pull that trigger, and she did, and Peacemaker didn't let her. Peacemaker's like, nope. And, you know, Winona's reaction is be like, you went wrong. Yeah. And it's so, such an emotional moment at the end there. It is. Love that. And, you know, and they set it up, they set it up, like, really well, too, because I, I love Doc's, yeah. hey, <laughs> you've got to kill your sister pep talk, you yeah. know, like, he start, you know, starts talking about his dog or whatever. And, you know, yeah. And Winona's old yeller joke is hilarious, but, you know, it's, it's really a perfect parallel. Like, mm -hmm. and the, the shoot your own dog theme is alive and well in old yeller. You see it in Of Mice and Men. And these stories and Doc's pep talk are all telling us the same thing, that love and compassion to some degree makes us responsible for people their yeah. problems, their well-being, and to some extent, their deeds. And this doesn't quite land with Winona. She's she's still not ready to accept that reality, but Willa's words make the difference for her. Willa tells her that death can be a mercy, and that's the angle that Winona needs to do what needs to be done. And especially, I mean, think of the last time she killed a human. It was her dad. Yeah. And holding that trauma with her and having to, and, and having a choice this time. You know, she just, she reacted last time when she shot Ward. And maybe Peacemaker had more of a hand in that than, than Winona did. But, you know, she didn't choose, I'm going to kill dad. She was trying to save him. Yep. She made an active decision to kill her sister mm -hmm. to save her sister to save purgatory yep. you know to, to save everybody she made that decision so and the gun yeah the gun is always at the center of that isn't it like mm -hmm. you know here willa had the gun in her hand and mm -hmm. she was trying to shoot winona and it didn't work but winona has the gun in her hand as a child she's trying to shoot a revenant and it kills ward instead that, mm -hmm. along with all of the different glowings and the, you know, colors and everything else, like, Peacemaker absolutely has a mind of its own and its own code and maybe even its own agenda. Oh, yes. I say it all the time. Peacemaker is just, I love that gun. It is such mm -hmm. a cool weapon. And it's one of the coolest, like, weapons we've gotten in, like, fantasy stuff, I think. It's fantasy sci-fi yeah. kind of genre sure, stuff. Yeah. It's just, I love it so much. I mean, who doesn't want a gun that lights up like that? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, Peacemaker let Winona kill two corrupted er herbs. Mm-hmm. So there's something to that. And just, 
you know, like Melanie acts the hell out of it. Yeah, she does. You know? Yeah. And even, and then after she does it, her awesome slide back through the gate and everything. So cool. It's pretty epic. Yeah. I kind of like it when both times Peacemaker goes across the border, you get that kind of, the, the runes show up, the same runes that we get on Peacemaker, kind of like a little shimmery gate kind of deal that comes up both times and mm-hmm. it's the same like it's that orange room so i kind of like that little detail too you know i want to talk about dolls too before i forget because this is just like a just a small note that i made myself but i always manage mm-hmm. to forget that we get something super important like from him about his serum in this episode and oh he my says, God, me too. <laughs> yeah. And I, I just, I forget that it's there, you know, like I, for, and further, uh, mm-hmm. what's worse, I forget that he told me this, but like, yeah, he says, I've taken it since I was a kid. It helps keep me alive and keeps some parts of me dead. Yep. And like, it's just, I mean, it just raises, it just completely changes the question, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Like before that. Yeah you really look at him like some kind of super soldier and he could still be that, but it, yeah. it totally changes his relationship to black badge. He's been on this, you know, air quotes medication, right? Since he was a child, a child who could not possibly understand the cost of something like this or, or the lifelong impact or anything like that. So like, I mean, just where did Black Black Badge find him? Why did they find him? Why did they recruit him? I really hope that we get some very concrete answers. Uh, And I would like a lot more of uh, Dolls' backstory, going back to, you know, his his first meeting with Black Badge. I'd like that, too. And, like, I, I have the same thing where it's like I forget about that line even though I've seen this episode so many times, I forget about that line because so much happens in this episode. Mm-hmm. And it's such like, a, it's because it, it's one line, you know, and it's in the middle of action and stuff like that. Yep. And it, you know, it's right before Nicole comes in. So yeah, I, that moment is like, so such a, an, an underrated moment, I yeah. think sometimes too, because it, it does. That's one of those, you know, let's, let's, raise several other questions about this character. Exactly. Because we just know he takes the serum that keeps some of him dead. He has to take certain amounts and certain colors of it. <laughs> like the certain like the certain colors are different uh, kinds of it, so he has to make sure he's careful about that. And it gives him lizard eyes and apparently some crazy strength because he yeah. threw he threw Big Steve right out the window. <laughs> and that was the that was the purple vial. Yes, because yeah, Doc, Doc shot him with the yeah. named Lavender, so that's how he picked. <laughs> Which was one of another like one of my favorite little moments where Doc's like looking at these. Well, I had a horse named Lavender once. I, I do love that. a I do I do too, and I love a bromance. And Doc mm-hmm. and dolls are never ever more precious to me than when they are working together and complimenting each other. And shooting each other up with strange purple serums. Like, I just... Yep. I adore them when they are a team. They make a good team. And, yes, you know, I mentioned this in our last episode when we talked a little bit about the love triangle. But, you know, I really appreciate, like, again, in this episode, they don't, like, Doc doesn't come after dolls for, you know, kissing Winona and all that crap. You know, Mm -hmm. it's... He doesn't he doesn't do it. So it's like, they've got a job to do. All Doc wants is some dynamite. <laughs> I ship him with dynamite almost as hard as I ship him with his hat. Uh, dy- anything that goes boom. That's, I just love that when he and why not? Cause a lot of times it's Tim Rosan's delivery, to be honest. Like a lot of these times, like these wouldn't be lines. I would normally necessarily be like, yes, I love this line. But I think it's like, it's Tim's delivery. It's cat's delivery. It's stuff like that. But Mm-hmm. When Winona is like, well, what do we have? And he's just like, things that go boom, because of course, that's what he's going to focus on. Doc and explosives. Oh, I do want to mention back to the sheriff station with the Earth Girls and Nicole, because obviously I haven't talked about that enough. I could spend pretty much the whole episode of the podcast talking about that moment. That scene. 
but that's not a here nor there. Mm -hmm. I want to mention, because Waverly does look at Winona and say, I love her, and she does say it quietly, and I remember there being some discussion as to whether or not Waverly actually hears Nicole. If you look at Nicole after, there was a very specific shot at Nicole after Waverly says that, where it's clear that Nicole, like, like heard her. Like, there's a reaction. It's a split second, but I do just need to point that out for my own vindication that you don't put in a shot like that when there's a moment like that if the character didn't hear it. I'm going to side with you on that. I think that really stood out to me, and I never yeah. questioned whether or not. I didn't either. Uh, whether or not she heard, yeah. That I just that was just never a question for me. But I, I, I remember seeing some other people, and I was like, she softens for a second. Like, Nicole's fa- like Nicole has a reaction. It's a split-second reaction, but she has one. So, yeah, I wanted to mention that. And then just a tiny moment, I really adore, after Nicole gets shot, the conversation that Waverly and, and Winona have, which I'm not going to bust out with because it's in my quotes. But I like how Winona is like, I'm going to give you this moment. But then it lasts like two seconds and then she like throws a coat on them. (laughs) And I love that moment so much. Also, right after Nicole gets shot and the right before they cut to commercial, the look on Winona's face is fabulous. That's another like fun background reaction kind of situation. Mm -hmm. Or I guess it's more at the foreground. But since you're freaking out, it's easy to miss. But the the look on Winona's face after Nicole gets shot is really fabulous. Mm -hmm. It makes me laugh every time. So sorry. I As per usual... I have a lot of things to say about a way hot scene. You don't owe me an apology. Uh, Good. I wasn't apologizing. (laughs) Just stating facts, yo. And I'm never going to say that again. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) Like I said, the heat's getting to me. Yeah, me too. (laughs) So yeah, I just wanted to say that. I know how many, do do you still have a a couple of favorite moments to to throw out there? I'm telling you, it's going to be the whole episode. Yeah, I mean, I still have, like, some, I, I mean, I guess, yeah, like, when Juan Carlo shows up, like, to warn yeah. Bobo not to cross the boundary, Bobo asks him what he's going to do about it, tell on him, and I would, I would love to get more information on that. Like, we know yeah. that Juan Carlo isn't just this, like, Watcher-esque type figure on the show, right? Like, observe the Dark Forces don't interfere, keep the balance, whatever. But the word choice of like, tell on me, it implies some kind of governing order. Like it hints at the possibility of consequence or judgment. Like, even if that's something that we see Bobo scoffing at, that's still what's implied. Yeah. That, that Juan Carlo reports to someone or something. And I would very much like to know, who or what that is. Yeah. I mean, there, there, cause there's a lot in the scenes that Juan Carlo has. I mean, even more to that one, you know, it's not even, what are you going to do? Tell on me, but it's, you're not allowed to interfere period. Like, and then I do like that moment where Bobo's like, so why are you here trying to, to reason with the, the demon instead of pleading with the human? And Juan Carlo's like, she's too far gone. Yeah. And Bobo tells him, you know, he can save him, himself and Willow. Mm-hmm. Willow. He can save himself and Willow, and that's a, that's an important moment too. Just you know, it's it's a weird peek at Bobo because we get a similar thing later when he's talking to to Waverly about the Earth Girls. Mm-hmm. You know how he used to watch them and wonder how a man like Ward Earth had so much goodness. Yep. And then he wanted to save the baby too. So it's just, it's a weird layer to Bobo amongst these conversations about the fact that Bobo says he didn't touch Willa, you know, when, when Waverly says something about seducing a 13 year old girl, Mm -hmm. but he did at some point because Willa wouldn't have come back and been like, you know, all the suggestive nonsense that I don't want to repeat because it squicks me out. So same. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, it, she was there's a little bit of Stockholm syndrome and stuff like that. So yeah, Bobo, you man, so it, it's it's weird that it's all mixed up in that. Mm-hmm. And even like Juan Carlo takes a dig at him about it 
you know, when, when Bobo's like, you know how we fell in love and one color is just like slim pickings at the hostage hut. Like that was one of my favorite quotes. Really? Mm -hmm. I actually didn't put it in my quotes. I just, cause I had it in my notes. So my other notes. So yeah, it's just, there's, there's a lot there and some of it's kind of, like I said, it, it's mm -hmm. spooky and gross and I don't want to talk about Bobo anymore. I think you set us up perfectly to talk about Waverly again, though, because Waverly. I would love walks, that. Yes. Let's get away from the creepy. Waverly walks right into the hornet's nest to confront Bobo. Mm -hmm. And I love what she tells Winona beforehand, that there's something she needs to do, something only yeah. she can do. And I'm, I'm going to mm -hmm. talk more about this in the spoiler section. But for now, I want to focus on her actions because she goes to the treehouse unarmed yeah. with anything but her intellect, right? And she attacks Bobo's image of himself. Like, yeah. first, she she appeals to him. She says, if he does this, if he crosses the boundary, right, the whole world will be overrun with filthy demons. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't include him in that. Yeah. She, she, like, dangles it, and he includes himself in it and, and gets defensive. And then she starts in on his relationship with Willa, the relationship he's built up in his own mind to be some great love story, maybe, mm -hmm. or, or maybe he just needs to get out and she's his ticket. We don't know. But I think what Waverly, I think Waverly wants to know, like, so she, she goes there and she starts poking these, these holes in, in that savior image that he has of himself and just kind of slowly. Yeah. Like eroding the facade to get at the truth. Yeah. And shocker, she's not an herb. Before we get into that, one more thing about Bobo and Willa. I did want to mention, because I kind of forgot to write it down. They have a really interesting dynamic, considering that you would always expect Bobo to be kind of... Aggressor? Yeah. But, you know, with the way he reacts to Willa, mm -hmm. it, it's relatively like submissive and stuff like that. And I don't want to, that's just the first word that comes to mind. Don't at me. Yeah, no, I think you're touching on something really okay. interesting though, because we actually see him tell Waverly to hide, right? Like from yeah. Willa because Bobo's not going to hurt her, but he knows that Willa will. So Willa's sort of like, yeah. it, it, you almost get the feeling in this episode. And I think this is what you're trying to say that she's something he has to rein in or wrangle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's weird. Yeah, you're right. And that bit about Willa kind of ties into Waverly not being in an herb. Yes. Or so Bobo says. So Bobo tells Waverly that she's not an herb. And that's kind of a big bombshell to drop. And that was one of our questions. Uh, we have no idea at the end of the season what the deal is with that. There's mm -hmm. no time yep. to answer it. Yep. But I did. This was one of the conversations I had with Emily when I interviewed her. Because my first thought was, like, one of the things I asked her was about how Willa treats Waverly. Like, assuming that Bobo's correct, and we don't know that Bobo's telling the truth. It's Bobo. He's a revenant. Like, he could be lying. But would w Willa know that? And could that be why she treats Waverly the way that she does? Mm. Because throughout the episode, like, the you know, from her from the day she came back, it's like, she does treat Waverly significantly different. Absolutely, yeah. You know, because we don't know what that means. We don't know, does that mean she's not Ward's kid? Does that mean, you know, what does that mean? And apologies to everybody who has listened to our previous podcast when we get into season two, because some of this is like the same conversation we've had. So sorry in advance. But we don't know what it means. We don't know if it means that they don't like that just Ward isn't her father. We don't know if she, you know, they don't even have the same mom. We don't know. We we don't know anything, but, you know, I, I was left wondering if maybe that influenced how Willa treated Waverly when she got back. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and especially having this conversation with Emily, who couldn't tell me anything. Like, let's be clear about that. She couldn't spoil anything. But, you know, the conversation that we had basically amounted to, yeah, it could be something like that. It could be, you know, Willa is just kind of a terrible person. <laughs> you know, sure, she yeah. was raised at a very, like, at a very young age to be trained as a killer, you know? Mm hmm So she, there's a lot of trauma there. So it could just be Willa's psychologically just kind of, like, there's a psychopathy there. 
like there's something wrong there. <laughs> it goes beyond that. But it does lend to a lot of different theories as to examining how Willa and Waverly interact, kind of adding that levels to it too. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And as you said, like she was raised from a very young age, you know, to fulfill this this destiny, right? She was trained with a gun. She, mm -hmm. you know, knew she was going to have to kill. She was going to have to murder. And, you know, it could be something as simple as she's so awful to Waverly because Waverly never had any of that put on her. None of it. Mm -hmm. Like, so, I mean, it, you know, it could be something like that, but yeah. Yeah, so... And I know, guys, I will, if you ask me for it, I'll, I'll give you the link to this, this interview because this, this conversation is in it. So <laughs> I'm not saying this only to be like, nope, it's only in my brain. <laughs> nope, it's only in my notes. Yeah, the, the, I'll ask me for the link and I'll send you the link to the interview. But yeah, it's just, it's, it has so many good questions. And that's kind of, I like getting into that, you know, where it's like, ooh, so what is the motivation here? Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, it's, and that moment after Willa and Bobo leave, it's just so heartbreaking. Like where Waverly is just left in this sad little tree house that was left, you know, where her sister was held for 14 years mm -hmm. and she's just crying and just, it's so sad. Also, it's pretty awful that the last thing Waverly basically heard Willa say like about her was calling her like that little snitch. Yeah which is, I mean, it's just, it's terrible. You know, she shot her girlfriend and then <laughs> that was pretty bad too. I'm just saying it's like, it, she's still, yeah. yeah. And then those are the parting words. For yeah. Her. But um, yeah, it's definitely just the interaction Bobo has with the girls because he didn't have to protect Waverly and he did. He did. Yeah. So it's, there's Bobo's, uh, we've mentioned it before. Bobo's an interesting character. Mm -hmm. Creepy. Like I said, like we talked about with the relationship with Willa, but interesting nonetheless. Yeah, and they do so much with motivations mm -hmm. on this show, you know, and like you you don't know someone else's motivations or you think you do and you don't. And like they, I mean, that even, you know, we touched on this a little bit earlier with dolls, but, you know, they, they spread that out yeah. to include Black Badge. And they did that in the finale, which was a really like strange choice like you know you could have been a little creeped out by them before but by the end of this finale like they want you asking some serious questions about black badge like when dolls is you know it, when black badge comes back into town and lucado is talking to dolls she makes it perfectly clear that the prevention of a demon plague is not necessarily priority number one. Mm -hmm. Like they kind of, they want to know whether or not Bobo can pull this off. Yeah. They tell dolls to stand down to see what happens. And like she, she says herself that if he does succeed, they'll observe and they won't interfere. So like, I mean, by the end of the season one finale, you're just like, what is Black Badge? Why is Black Badge? And what are they after? Because obviously, like, no matter how many, you know, missiles they, they toss around, like, yeah. it's not purely about containment for them. If they genuinely are, if they're willing to take the risk, mm -hmm. you know, that Bobo can make this happen. So, And we see that curiosity in episode Three, episode three. I was that started out so confident. I, I apologize. In episode three, it did come on really strong. I'm so sorry. Sometimes it happens, and then sometimes I come on strong and it just you know goes away. In episode three, we we see that with the revenants doing that ritual to to possess a, somebody and get over the line, and dolls delays helping Winona because he he wanted to see what would happen. So we have seen that that is a tactic of black badges before. That's true. That's a really good point. Yeah. But we just not on such a grand scale. We're not talking about, oh, one revenant gets away. They're mm -hmm. talking about opening this boundary. And as. Yeah. Hell on earth. Yeah. Because like, we don't know what black badge necessarily knows about it because we don't get the information that the triangle isn't only a prison, but a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. until this episode when Juan Carlo was talking to Winona. 
you know, we don't get that information. Yep. So we don't, but we don't know what information Black Badge has. So it, it's definitely, it, it's an interesting thing where, cause you're, where they're just like, hmm, well. And I mean, Lucado even stops Winona from killing Bobo because they want a guinea pig. Yep. Lucado also, like, uh, your bleaker case came up a little bit too. Cause Lucado's, yeah. yeah, Lucado's standing there with Winona and she's like, we know what you did. And Winona says that the bleaker case had something to do with B&Es, right? So breaking and entering, yeah. like, somehow. Mm-hmm. And Lucado makes it perfectly clear that that's not what she's talking about. And we, the audience, mm-hmm. have no idea what she's talking about. But this bleaker case that keeps getting, you know, like, thrown yeah. up in conjunction with Winona's name is apparently, according to Black Badge, the least of her sins. Yeah. Well, I mean, from what Winona said, it's just a couple of BNEs. That's another thing. I really honestly forgot we get that line because, again, so, so much happens in this episode. I forget about some of the little stuff like that. I do, too. Until I rewatch. But that's just, you know, there's there's only so much I can retain. and There's so much big stuff. But, yeah, I mean, honestly, the kind of a long... I keep jumping around and I apologize because my brain's like, wee! But kind of talking about uh, Winona killing Bobo, you know, she gets two mercy kills this episode. She kills mm-hmm. two people and they're both mercy kills um, mm-hmm. because the second one is Bobo. Because she she could have let him go. Yeah, she could have. But she, she shot him and she saved him from being burnt to a crisp and experimented on. Yep. We have no idea what a rev would look like after a few months considering what levi looked like after just a couple of days yeah it was pretty bad i just have forehead kiss in my erp sister's note i just love them so much i love the you okay baby girl and then i love just a little forehead kiss when they separate after that you know when waverly goes to the treehouse and when i goes to take care of goes to shorties i just i love that i love the erp sisters so much they're a kick in the sibling feels every time they really are. I just have a lot of little things. I've come down to my lot of little things. So just the fight at the end. I mean, Bobo deflecting the bullets was really cool. Why not attaching the grenade to the gun, knowing that Bobo would take it? So great. And yeah, then Doc good. got his explosion. Finally. Unfortunately, it knocked both him and Bobo out, but it was for the best. That showdown really belonged to nobody but Willa and we- Why not? Yeah, that's... Yeah, well said. And, you know, dolls to come in and, and shoot Willa to leave Winona in a hard, in a kind of a hard place. I, I'm not entirely sure that Winona would have shot Willa had dolls not shot her first. E- yeah, I'm, I'm with you. It was one more little push. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to, to get Winona to do what, what needed to be done. And it was, and I, you know, we see later, you know, like when they're talking about whether or not they're, they're going to rescue him, that she's kind of grateful, you know, like she says, you know, like the guy who shot my sister, of course, we're going to go get him. Of course, we're going to break him out. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, and, and you know, did he mean to wound her? Did he mean to kill her and take that off Winona's plate completely? I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, he tells Doc there wasn't a clean shot. And if remembering that scene, there was a clean shot for somebody like Dolls. So it was one of those, like, he knew, I think he knew he couldn't be the one to do it. Like Doc and Plucky. And Plucky. Doc knew he couldn't leave it to Wyatt. It's really terrible. The dog analogy is really terrible comparing people. Like, I mean, I say that, but I do all the time compare children and dogs, so... Look, dogs are just wonderful. It shows up. It, it shows up a, a few times in literature, though. So yeah. I mean, I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was really artfully done. Mm-hmm. No, it's good. So yeah, it's just it's an interesting kind of moment. I liked the stupid Carl throwback from you know we got that throwback back to when I was saying stupid Carl that we had in the first episode. I did too. And maybe we'll see him again. I mean, we don't know. He's not dead. He's still not dead. Yeah, she didn't put him down with Peacemaker. Mm-mm. Oh. I also have a note in here. It's like, I just want to say there's no way Nicole would have flung back like that because I am that person and that's a note I put in my stuff <laughs> when Nicole got shot. Oh, one more kind of important plotty thing and then I'm done, I promise. When they're talking about Waverly, Bobo tells Waverly, or sorry, Willa, jeez. <sighs> Maybe next episode I'll get everybody's names right. 
Bobo tells Waverly, you know, when he's when he hid Willa away, Constance erased her memory days before she turned 27, which means she was only with Lou for a year because she and Winona are only, I mean, she was almost, I mean, it was, yeah, it was like a year, year and a half, something like that. Because she and Winona are only a year apart. So I thought that was interesting because the impression that you kind of get is that she might have been there longer. Yeah, you do. You know, when you first see her, when she's first introduced. But yeah, she constantly erased her memories days before she turned 27. And then one of the other throwaway things that we didn't quite mention is apparently Bobo wasn't the only one to visit her in the treehouse. And I'm assuming she's not talking to Constance because Bobo knew about Constance visiting. She tells Winona that somebody else, you know, visited making promises in the dark. So that could also be kind of a reason why Willa so easily came to Bobo's side and flipped on her family. So something else was kind of in her ear. But we don't know because that's where her talking about death can be a mercy. Yeah. Comes from. And somehow we managed to like almost miss the fact that Waverly touched the goo. I was saving, you gotta save the best for last, right? You gotta save it for last. She touched it, you guys. We don't know. Her eyes went black. That she drew a, a gun. Mm hmm. And boom. I mean, I know, I know what happened. I know what happened. But maybe some of you don't. So you should probably get started on season one. You mean season two? Or season two, episode one, like, stat. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, we. We, we do know, and we'll talk about it a little bit in the spoiler section. But, yeah, Waverly, Waverly touched some goo. And I think my favorite thing about it, my interview with Emily, was us talking about that. And she was like, the answer she gave me, and I'm surprised she gave me anything, but, you know, thinks it was calling to her. You know, well, uh, Waverly had a pretty tough time. And the, the quote I had from Emily was just that I think she was pretty angry. She was pretty emotionally traumatized. You know, but I got the impression that the goo wanted her to touch it, as tentacle goo sometimes does. The seduction of the tentacle goo, which is still one of my seduction. favorite things I have ever, like, one of my favorite things I think I've ever heard her say. <laughs> and I wanted yeah, so bad to title my interview, like, the seduction of the tentacle goo. So bad. So I just, I had to mention that because it was one of my favorite things to come out of it, the interview. You know what the cool thing is? That can totally be the blurb for this recording. Oh, yes. I think it yeah. was a blurb for my interview, actually. I, I, I said I, I made it something, but yeah, it will be the blurb. We got to add it's the technical goo because it is. I mean, it's it's kind of a – it was a very unexpected way to end the episode because you're like, was, okay, yeah. you know, and the season even because you're like, okay, well, Black Badge took dolls. Black Badge tried to take Bobo. Black Badge is planning on blowing Purgatory up. Winona just had to shoot her sister. And then mm -hmm. you think, okay, okay, okay. And then Waverly touches some goo, pulls a gun, and we hear a gunshot. Yep. We don't know what happened, though. Yeah. And then the screen goes dark. What? And then we didn't know for another several weeks yeah. if, this, if it was renewed. I don't remember exactly how long it took. I'm sure somebody would tell me. Kevin, how long was it? I know he'll know. And he'll yeah, tell he'll me. It yeah, was I'm several afraid. weeks. Yeah. It was several weeks, though, that we didn't find out about the season two. It was San Diego Comic Con. That's when we got the news. So it was a month later. Yeah, there you go. It was about a month later because this episode, you want to hear how good I am? I believe this episode aired on June 22nd of 2016. Now let's check it. <laughs> now let's check it. Let's see. Just for funsies. Ah, I was close. June 24th. I went the wrong way. Two days, though. I'm, I'm not good. wrong. I knew it was around my birthday. I just couldn't remember what day it was. But yeah, I, it, we, we had about a month, I think, to, to, until we found out. So. Yeah, it was a heck of a cliffhanger. It was a long month. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but if you all haven't seen that video of the cast finding out for the, rene the renewal, uh, the season two renewal, it's such a fun video. It and is. then the, when so uh, sweet. Melanie tells everybody at, at Comic-Con, it's pretty fabulous. But with that, that leaves us with quotes, I think. I, I think I'm done with my random nonsense. Yeah, all I have is quotes. Cool. So, you want to start? I will start with Willa's, what is this? Talk about how great my sisters are day. 
Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah, I love it because every day is talk about how great the Herb Sisters Day is. Yeah, I don't know how she didn't know that. I do kind of like that moment, though. I mean, Willow's kind of ranting in a way that anybody would rant about your sister. Like, you look at it in the gross context that it is, but still, I mean, think about ranting to a significant other. I lose that t- I hate that I use that term for Bobo, but it, in their eyes, a significant other to a sibling and just having them go, well, yeah, but they're not that, you know, oh, but she's smart, you know, oh, she's, she's intelligent, like, you know, she's intuitive and stuff like that. It's just kind of one of those, like, it, it was one of those kind of like real moments where you're like, seriously, as unfortunate as it is, it was a relatable moment in a way, in a twisted way. But yeah, I, I like that. When Doc and, and Dolls go to his, the gun safe and got any dynamite in there? Nope. Snookered once again. <laughs> Doc and his dynamite. I really liked Winona's. If there's one thing I've learned the past year, it's that the greater good is a moving target. Yeah, that was a good one. I did not have that one on my list for some reason. I have the entire exchange when Nicole comes in in that first scene with the guys. <laughs> so all of that, yep. I, I literally have that all written down just because I enjoy Doc's delivery of purgatories run by Devonant Revenants, a.k.a. Why Earp's Resurrected outlaw, Outlaws, Jesus. Bobo Del Rey is their leader. I am Doc Holliday. Yes, that Doc Holliday. And Doll's here. He's just a dick. And then she, finally, thank you. Actually, it makes perfect sense, except that last part. <laughs> So I just love all that. And then it ends with, you know, Nicole being welcomed into Black Badge Mm -hmm. as Agent Hot. Yep. What else you got? I love finally picked a smart one. Oh, yeah. I also have from note from Winona starting that with no blood. There's no blood. If my sister joined the dark side and you've been a revenant this whole time, I'm just going to call in sick. I really like that one, too. I have from that. Yeah. I have from that moment to Waverly saying, see, super smart, all that typed up as well. I th- so I have that as like one entry on my books. <laughs> I think my favorite line in the episode or like the line that got the biggest laugh for me personally was Nedley, you look sweatier than usual, which is really saying something. I also have the entire exchange from Winona saying that until... Winona letting him know that Chrissy's alive. I have that all typed up as well. Girl, you gotta stop transcribing. I can't help it, because sometimes I like to have it, because I don't know what pieces I want to pick out, and sometimes I like to have it in case I want to reference it. It still only took me, like, an hour to watch the episode. It's fine. It's crazy. Because, unfortunately, some of this I could do without really having to pause too much, because that's what my brain can do. So... Yeah, no, I just, because I really liked Nedley's, like, little speech thing. It was a good speech. I mentioned I had a horse named Lavender once. That's on my list. (laughs) Just because I love it. That was his logic. I liked Winona's never was a great judge of character, always ended up dating the drummer. (laughs) Yeah. Dolls being like, you pocketed my drugs. I brought you your drugs. I brought your drugs. You were the laziest junkie I ever met. (laughs) When Winona picks up the phone in the beginning, hello, woman you currently want to kill, please be Waverly. (laughs) (laughs) And Peacemaker is just a gun. Waverly is Waverly. Yeah. I mentioned you okay, baby girl. Every time Winona calls her baby girl. Just gets me right in the heart. Oh, Willow's really twisted, like, after she shoots Nicole and walking out, like, now you know what it feels like when people take your things. Yeah. And I pop that in my quotes. Yeah. Only because it's another, like, one of those that's such, like, a sibling, it's such a childish reaction to have. Really childish, yeah. Mm hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's kind of one of those, like, God, that's such a sibling thing. Granted, we're talking about on a very grand scale because somebody's life was really, like, she didn't know that Nicole was wearing the vest. So, I mean, on a, but it is kind of still, it's this childish sibling thing that we see throughout the episode with Willow. So that's why I wanted to mention it. Mm-hmm. Do you have more on your list? No, I'm done. Ha, I still beat you. I think I stopped writing. I probably stopped typing later than you did as far as like when when (laughs) Chris has decided to throw in a towel and just be like, nope, I I can't write everything down. I do like one of, it is Winona's last, no, it's it's one of Winona's last lines. I keep forgetting about that she speaks in that last scene. But when she's talking to Juan Carlo and she says, you know who I am, that I'm the guy on earth air, I got work to do. Mm Mm-hmm. I love that line. I love get to work. Okay. I think that was all on the list. 
One of these days you're going to get me. One day. Oh, there is one thing we did, we forgot to mention. I know, I know you wanted to table it, but this has been your thing all season. You did not get a body part in this episode. I didn't. We ended with no body part before the credits. I'm really broken up about it. I'm very glad that you twisted the knife, Catherine. I'm sorry. I felt it was only right for me to mention it. I, I felt like it would be wrong for me to, to let it go. From a continuity standpoint, I guess you're right. I am always... No, I'm just kidding. The last time I said that, I ended up saying something grossly wrong that I then had to correct. So... <laughs> No more. I am not going to say that again. I'm, I'm not going to curse myself again. Alrighty. So was there anything else we wanted to talk about in our spoiler free section? No, that's it for me. Alrighty then. So let's go ahead and, and wrap this section up. So thank you everybody who's been listening to us doing this, whether it's the first time watching a series, first time listening to the podcast, or, you know, our regular listeners who are happy to hear us going back and covering this before season three, all of you and people who fall into another category I didn't mention. We appreciate you all. Thank you so much for, for listening and for sharing everything. We, we really appreciate it. So with that, go ahead and let people know where to find us. So Laura, where can they find you online? You guys can find me on Twitter at RS Mayfair. And you can find me on Twitter at CMUSHA. That's at C-M-E-U-S-H-A-W. You can find the podcast on Twitter at 4YE underscore M-Y-P podcast. You can find 4YE on Twitter at 4 underscore Y underscore E. And that is the number four for both of those. And we're still kind of trying to figure out how to get us on iTunes and stuff because as of right now, the only way to listen is via YouTube or the link on the website. As I mentioned way too many times, sorry guys, I'm still really excited about that interview. If you want to read it, you just give me a yell at either in the DMs or just uh, at me or something like that. And I'll, I'll hunt the link down. It is, since it's two years old, it might be hard to find. So unless you do some searching on the site. So I can just throw you the link. It's not, not a problem. That I think that's everything. So if you are not sticking around for our spoiler section, then we will see you next time. And if you are sticking around, then we will be with you right after this nifty commercial, courtesy of Earth Fiction Addiction. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Make Your Peace Podcast is the Winona Earp fan podcast that digs deep into every episode, not only providing comprehensive recaps, but also delving into character relationships and motivations. Hosts Catherine and Laura take their time exploring all of the nooks and crannies of each action-packed episode, puzzling over and speculating on moments you may have missed. If you enjoy a good discussion of your favorite sci-fi show, then this podcast is definitely for you. You can find Make Your Peace podcast on Twitter at 4YE underscore MYP podcast, where you will find links to their latest episodes. Make Your Peace podcast. Dig a little deeper. All righty. So we're going to go ahead and get into our spoiler filled section. So basically we're going into season two spoilers at this point since we still aren't at season three yet, and we're all done with season one. So if you haven't seen season two and you don't want to be spoiled, turn off the podcast. We love you, but turn off the podcast. If you do want to be spoiled or won't be spoiled, please stick around. So with that, let's get into it. We probably won't have a long section here just because... We're kind of getting closer and closer to kind of when we started the, the podcast as far as what we might have already, we, we might be repeating things. Granted, mm -hmm. it's, it's been a year since we recorded that first episode, and I don't necessarily remember what was discussed, but I have a feeling some of the, the theories and stuff like that have have probably been covered, so we're, we're not going to go too far into it. Just listen to our other podcasts. Yeah, we also still have like a lot of the same lingering questions. So a lot of the questions yeah. that we could raise to you right now are questions that you'll hear us raising, you know, if you keep listening to all of our season two coverage. So a lot of those mysteries, you know, stick around for a while. Yeah. So I encourage you to go check out the rest of our podcast if you haven't already. We've got a weird little gap that we're still trying to fill in. So 
you know, we our technically first episode was covering episode four of season of season two. So with that, and like I said, having not listened to and having it been a while since we marathoned season two, I think we're probably going to be hesitant to go really in depth with some of these. So if you think we forgot something, it may be in a podcast that you'll listen to later. And that's your disclaimer. That's probably longer than our content. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Um, alrighty, so do you want to start, or do you want me to start? I will. I always make you start. I will start with a simple little inside flail that this is technically my first shot of Gooverly, and you know that I love her. Oh, yes. Gooverly was pretty fabulous. Gooverly was pretty great. (sighs) So. So there, I got that out of my system. I'm going to talk about it again for episode one of season two but that's all for now and episode two and three Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and four and five and i believe we talk about her throughout the rest of season two Mm -hmm. oh i wanted to ask you something and i should have asked you this before this was stupid of me but like we can cut this too but like black badge's ultimate objective has got to be the harnessing of supernatural forces for military gain right that would be my guess but we don't know that, right? Correct. Okay. All right, great. Well, then we don't have to cut it. We can leave it. Right. What we know is that they've apparently experimented on people. We've seen that from Dolls, and we'll see that from Rachel Scarston's character. You yep. know, Dolls isn't the only one. We also, we see them having brought in demons. Mm-hmm. And they're um, testing them or doing of, some kind yeah. of experiments, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, they... They have, they, they've been housing quite a lot of, of demons and, and artifacts of that nature. So yeah, they're, they're doing something uh, one would assume for military gain uh, in some way, shape or form. Yeah. Some side, like maybe they're perfecting a super soldier. Maybe they're working on other, like other methods to gain an upper hand combat. We don't know. We don't know. Black badge is still a, a very big mystery for us. Mm-hmm. Also still a mystery is Waverly's Origins. Yes. We got an obnoxious tease throughout season two, but we still don't have an answer for who Waverly's parents are. Nope. No idea. So that was a season long endeavor for season two, trying to get that answer and kind of getting it kind of not with that weird obnoxious Bobo tease. Mm-hmm. I, I feel a certain way about it. Can you tell? I Yeah, it shows. Yeah. There is one question mm-hmm. I had, though, and I don't think this is one I've raised yet, because once again, I forget about smaller lines like this, like when Willa is talking to Winona about another entity, another somebody else who visited her in the treehouse, yeah. making promises in the dark. We don't know who that was. No, it kind of goes back to that doll's line about... You know, like you yeah. don't make bargains, you know, with the guys upstairs for everlasting life. You go to the other guys for that. Like, kind of, yeah. yeah. But here's also my question. Could it have been Mixion? Mm, sure, yeah. Because we know, like, Ewan and the firemen who belong to whatever kind of cult or whatever. Not a cult, but. I love that exhausted sigh you put ahead of it. I'm sorry. I it's so fun. The random white dude is like a character I, I care the least about. I know. I know. The fact that I even got his name right is a win for me. It's impressive. I couldn't have done that. I couldn't. The, the fight, yeah, but the firefighters who—it's not a cult, but it might as well be. I can't remember who they are, but don't at me. I'll find. Like I'll remember. But you know they've been fighting Mixion for a while now, and we do know. That that tentacly thing was Mixion because we find out mm-hmm. that the goo was Mixion. So mm-hmm. it makes sense for the first creature. Like maybe that's what it was. We don't we don't know. So that was yeah, a, that's a good point. Thought I had that I hadn't. I hope I haven't had before. You know, it could kind of explain a little bit too why Willa seemed remarkably unafraid of it. Yeah. Like until it grabbed her. Yeah. And I mean, I don't. It didn't grab her until she was shot. Yeah, it kind of, it. she sort of registered it as something she was expecting. I yeah. mean, that's just wild speculation. But, mm-hmm. like, she wasn't like, oh, my God, a giant tentacle. You know what I mean? Like, 
she didn't have yeah. the reaction that most normal people would have. Or that anybody else on the other side of that gate had. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe. Yeah, maybe it was Mixion. Good call. Maybe. But we still don't know what Winona did. We have no idea what Mr. What Lucado was hinting at. Yeah. Yeah. We do know that Lucado was bringing up Kandahar, that her husband was in Kandahar with dolls. We find that out, I think, next episode. We do. Yeah, I can confirm that for once. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Because you. <laughs> I've already seen it. Yeah, I've already you made fl- my notes. You've watched the episode more recently than I have. It's insane. Look at me. I know. Look at the continuity. Uh, whereas I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, I wonder if I can just use my recap instead of watching the episode because I'm lazy, not because I don't enjoy the episode. But yeah, I honestly didn't have a lot of spoiler stuff. What else yeah. did you have? You know, before we wrap up, I want to touch real quick on Waverly and the Treehouse again. Yes. And that's just, you know, her her wording to Winona that it's something only she can do. Mm-hmm. That only she can go, like, meet with Bobo and kind of try to beseech him, you know, like, to, to yeah. stop, you know, and everything. I, like... We see right there that, like, she knows Bobo isn't going to hurt her. She knows it. Yeah. She doesn't know why, and she doesn't understand it, and she doesn't need to understand it to use it bravely. Yeah. She has, what she does know is that she has a courtesy that Bobo does not extend to Winona. So there won't be right. a shootout if she goes alone. And we know that. We know now that Waver or that Winona planted the seed of Waverly as Bobo's guardian angel when she took that wonky time yeah. walk in season two. But Waverly knows none of this, and that's what makes it mm-hmm. so remarkable. She doesn't let that mystery slow her down either. She's, yeah, yeah I mean, as she's she's the coolest. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and I mean, there's there's also there is also not to detract from what you're saying, but she also knew she the time it would take take to explain to Winona, oh, you need to go have this conversation with Bobo because this is what happened. You know, Bobo is Robert Spain, you know, stuff like that. Like, because she connected those dots quicker than anybody else did. Sure. Yeah. That's a point too. Yeah. So that's also, it's also a mark. It's a mark of her intelligence just in general, because she is kind of, she put, she connected those dots. She was the only one who knew that that would be the spot to go. But yeah, it is interesting, you know, Waverly and Willa both have a special relationship with Bobo, just in very different ways. Yes. So, yeah, that's, it's, it is, it is an interesting thing. And I think that treehouse moment especially was what had people speculating that Waverly was Bobo's child. Yeah. And I mean, made sense at the time. Yeah. But yeah, the only other thing I had and this was a random because I got to get one random, random, random speculative thing. And I haven't had one of those in a long time. Do it. So maybe Willa was so weird about Waverly because it was like almost a Dawn Summer situation where maybe Waverly was like added to the household and people's people's memories were altered. And maybe Wa- Willa with her memory being wonky because Constance played with it. Maybe there was something about that, too, where she's like, oh, there's something extra not right about her. The only thing that I would say to that is that she we agrees. get a lot. Yeah, we get a lot of animosity between them as kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, that also makes me just, well, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of Willa's weirdness could be having this tiny human thrust upon her when she was old enough mm-hmm. to reason. And she was like, but that's yeah. not my sister. And they're like, no, it's your sister. And she's like, but it's not. Yeah. Like, yeah. I told you I get one. I get one wonky theory. No, I like, I do like it. And I, I'm not even saying that it's, it's wrong. Right. Because like, there's a big difference between like being a nasty, you know, big sister mm-hmm. and being what, what Willa was as an adult to Waverly. That's yeah. a big difference. Oh yeah. I mean, and I've talked about this before. I have older siblings and I am an older sibling. Mm -hmm. So like, and I mean, there's a sizable gap between me and the younger of the older siblings. Like it's eight years, it's eight and nine years between me and my older siblings. So like, I, I know what it's like to have older siblings who are kind of that you don't like very much when you grow up. 
Mm-hmm. So I can, I can, I can, I can very much empathize with Waverly's end of this and very much like, so it's kind of the idea of an older sibling kind of being terrible to a much younger sibling because it changes the dynamic is not a different thing for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's just, especially looking at the Earps. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to finding out what's up with Waverly and her, um, her background and everything. Me too. And her parentage. I really want that to be one of the first couple answers we get in the season, in season three. To be honest, I'm kind of, I need an answer. This is dragging out a little bit too long for me because I'm impatient. Yeah. And it's Waverly, you know? I know what I love her. And it's like central to her being or like how she came into being. Yeah. That's an answer that I want. Yeah. So bad. Sooner rather wanted, than later. So yeah. bad. That was it for me though, dude. Oh, that was it for me. I just had to throw out that one random theory, let you all yell at me about how <laughs> wrong know. I am. I wasn't talking about you. I'm talking oh. about the listeners. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was confusing how I said that. So I will give you a pass. So I know we, we give each other, we're, we're good. To, we're, we're pretty good about each other's random theories. I think so. So, yeah, but with that, that's our season one folks. So that's we right. will keep going with, yeah, with the next couple episodes of season two. So stay tuned and we are getting closer and closer to season three airing. So make sure you harass everybody to catch up so that every, so that you can be there for the premiere. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys.